All right, so today we're going to start work on a MacBook Air that does not see the keyboard and does not see the trackpad, which is something that I covered in a couple of earlier videos. So one of the first things that I want you to do whenever it doesn't see the keyboard or the trackpad, particularly if your machine is an 820-3437 model or an 820-3435 with a Haswell series uh, CPU that has the PCH integrated. What I want you to do is I want you to turn the computer off. The power button will still work, usually when the keyboard and trackpad don't work often. Now, and I want you to turn it on and hold down the option key. If it works when you hold that option and you, and you can use the keyboard and the trackpad in that mode, if it works, then if it doesn't work in the operating system, you're fucked. 99% of the time, I'm going to say that you're fucked. I still haven't figured out a solution for that. I have, num I have a bunch of Haswell series machines that have that issue. Um, if we go over the schematic here, you'll notice a uh, good chance as to why that is. So let's see. Do, is my screen capture still one frame per second? It is still one frame per second. Fucking piece of shit. Let's see. Yeah, the this, this screen capture sucks balls. It used to not do that. So let's see. I'm just going to add a program capture, a window capture, PDF. All right. Let's reset this. Fuck the screen capture. We delete the screen capture because that shit doesn't fucking work. All right. So let's go over to the 820-3437. Let's go over to the trackpad keyboard connector. By the trackpad keyboard connector, what you're going to notice is that there are actually two ways for the trackpad and the keyboard to communicate with, this, with the CPU. Come on. Get me to where I want to go. Ah, here we go. IPD. So, you have USB trackpad and USB. See, over here. And then you also have SPI data lines. So there's two different ways for it to communicate. You have these two, and then you have the SPI lines over here. See? Yeah. Now, the, these are the two different ways it can communicate. So most likely it's using SPI in the operating system in USB and EFI, or it's using SPI in the EFI mode and USB in the operating system. I forget which way it is. But that's why it will work in one and not the other. Why will it not work via SPI when these resistors are fine and there's no noticeable corrosion and it looks just fine? I have no fucking idea. That's going to be your journey. That's going to be your nightmare to solve. Uh, I still haven't solved it yet. Uh, one of these days I'll get around to it when I actually have free fucking time. But you know, again, good, good luck with that one. So this one doesn't have it working at all. As you saw, I held down the keys. It sees nothing, nothing. The only thing that works is the power button. Now, the power button is going to be able to work independently of everything else. The reason that is is because the power button is not a part of the rest of the keyboard. It's not actually something that requires power to work. See where we have SMC on off L here? The whole idea is you're shorting that signal to ground in order to turn the computer on. So this over here is going to be the SMC. See over here it says SMC? Right next to this nice big alert that says that I'm not allowed to show you how to fix these products. Dare I actually educate you? We ignore this shit. These people over here can get a big... Big, big, fuck you, because, eh, frankly, you, you, you have the right to learn how to repair your own products. You have the right to fix things. Like, again, fuck what they think. Anyway, back to what we were doing here. So, back to what we were doing. Uh, so, over here, this is the SMC. The way that works is that signal, SMC on off L, it means that you're touching the power button when the signal is low. If you don't understand what the underscore L is, you can watch my video on what the underscore L is. That means that the signal is asserted when it's low. So that signal is always going to be 3.442 volts, and when you hit the power button, you're bringing it low, which means that it thinks you touched the power button. So that's always going to work independently of everything else, unless your keyboard itself is totally fucked up and destroyed. So let's go over to that keyboard connector area. And just start measuring around and see what we get. So one of the things that I could measure for really quickly, uh, just to, things that, were, that I, I expect to, to be there. So PP5VS4, I expect to be on pin 14, it's power. PP3V42 on pin 19, I expect to be there. PP3V3S4 on pin 10, I expect to be there. So let's see if the keyboard is even being powered and being told to turn on. So with that, let's switch over to another mode and hope that my function keys here actually work. So we're going to put the multimeter where maybe you can kind of sort of see it. I can barely see it over there, but oh well. And let's move the microscope over. 
and see what I get on different pins. Now, the first one over here is going to be pin 19, PP3V42 underscore G3Hot underscore IPD is supposed to be there. So we should see 3.4 volts on pin 19. And on pin 19, well, you can't see shit. Let me just move this around a little so you can actually see. Here we go. PP3V3, uh, PP3V42. And I get 3.42 volts. Beautiful. Now on pin 14, I'm supposed to have PP5VS4 underscore IPD, which is going to be PP5V5 volts. As long as the computer is in an S4 state or higher, it's on right now. So obviously we have surpassed an S4 state. So let's see, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. And what do I get? 5 volt, 5.1 volts, close enough. Now we check on pin 10. Let's see. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I get... 1.956? Huh? What the fuck? All right, so let's see where that comes from because that's going to be the cause of our issue here. So if I go backwards, PP3V3S4 underscore IPD, and I follow the little line, it looks like PP3V3S4 turns into PP3V3S4 underscore IPD through this resistor R4830. So we're going to try to find out where that is on the board view software. So let's get the board view software in view here means doing a window capture of the Landrex program, and let's see if that shit actually works. Bam, it does. That's surprising. Okay, make it f show up the way it's supposed to, and wow, that, that, that looks incredibly fucked up. This looks fucked up beyond what I would ever imagine. Okay, let's just reload the board view. Okay, so what do you guys see? What you see is... Yeah, that looks like shit. Is it just me, or does that look totally worthless? And you can actually kind of see my hands on the bottom, too. That's interesting. And uh, that's, that's, that's kind of weird. Yeah, this sucks. Oh, well. What are, we, what are you going to do? I'll figure out this open broadcaster shit later. You know what? I'm actually better off with that one frame a second shit. So let's just do that. Fuck this window capture thing. We're going to do the screen capture. Dis or display capture. Create new. Thank you. Food is here. So now I have a very little motivation to do this repair properly. I'm hungry. All right, do this. Look at that one frame a second bullshit. See, there's no... I don't know what I did to make that thing fast. Maybe it's just something that fucked up in the versions. I'm telling you, if you find software that works for you and it actually does what you want, never fucking update it. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Because if you have something that works and does everything you need and you update it, it's not going to do what what you need. It's not going to do more of what you need because it already does what you need, but it can potentially fuck up what it did that was actually right. So right over here we have R4830 that's supposed to be a zero ohm resistor. So let's check out what it looks like on the motherboard. My bagels are here. It's a bagel with this it's a beautiful bagel with this amazing toast uh, tasting tofu spread. There's this place that just opened up recently in the area that has some really good stuff. I never, it opened up where this old bakery used to be, and a lot of people were pissed off that it did. And the thing that I, I, I really don't get is when people do, you know, they say things like, oh, they're destroying the history by tearing down the things that were in this neighborhood forever because the rent is getting higher and blah, blah, blah. And I'm all for, I, I understand the idea that rent in New York City is a ripoff. I'm, I, I, trust me, I get it. But what, I, what I'm not necessarily for is this idea, this just blind loyalty towards businesses just because they've been here for a really long time. Like, that happened with this store. This used to be a linoleum store, and a lot of people were pissed off that I came in and turned it into a laptop repair place, right? But, and he was bitching about the rent, and, like, I know what his rent was when he was here. It was not a lot of money for what it is. If you can't make money in this location, then it's, it's you know, it's not the world's problem. It's yours for offering an irrelevant service or good, like linoleum in 2016. <laughs> uh, but... <clears throat> He seemed like a nice enough guy. It's just, you know, is what it is. Things change. And there was this bakery, and, you know, I mean, I remember getting stuff there, and it was like nine days. It tasted like it was nine days old. Like, sometimes you got really good stuff. Sometimes the stuff tasted like it was nine days old. And right across the street is this bakery where everything's always fresh for the same price. And it's just, you know, why? Why would I? Why? Like, I'm happy that there's a place there that makes much better food than the place that used to be. Someday what I do will be irrelevant, and hopefully somebody who is relevant will take 
this space over, you know? 50 years from now, there shouldn't just be a laptop repair store here, just, you know, for historic sake. Anyway, let's find that little resistor. You can still see the multimeter through my bag. I really want that. I want my food. Yeah, we'll finish the board repair first. I don't want R4830, supposed to be zero ohms. We go into the microscope view here. Let's find that thing. Where are you, mofo? Are you near the U9, U7100? No, you're to the left of the U7100. Here we are. This is supposed to be zero ohms. And it's some number that I can't read that's not zero ohms. So we replace it. And let's see what happens from there. So I'm going to take the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my fume extractor so I don't breathe in any of this stuff. Second thing I'm going to do is take my food and move it over to the next room. Because there's absolutely positively no reason to do this crap around food. I think I saw some lead free on that resistor, so let's get rid of that. Bam. Remember, the faster we finish, the faster we get to that tofu herb spread bagel. That place makes some good stuff. Now we wait for the RTC reset to complete, and then we go from there. The fan is going to turn on, off, on, off, on, off. Okay, I missed my option to hit the power button. Blame. But the trackpad does work, and I have a caps lock key. Thank God it's letting me go in a guest user without that long reboot shit. So I'm in the I'm in here. The camera's on face focus and it's meant to zoom in on me, not there, so it's gonna look like shit. But this is good enough for you to tell. See? Mouse is good. And my caps lock key. Which didn't work before. Got my caps lock. I love when you can boot into guest mode without having to do that rebooting bullshit. If have, have you guys noticed, I mean, seriously, like Apple can get a, they have a computer with a two gigabyte per second solid state drive, two gigabyte per second so SSD, quad core Haswell processor, 16 gigabytes of RAM, just blazing fast. And when you, uh, well, you, you got to boot into guest user mode when it does that thing where it's like securely booting into guest user mode. Oh my God. I mean, it, it, it fucking sucks, man. It really does. It takes forever. It's insane. 
But yeah, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Just keep that thing in mind that I told you about that whole SPI and USB thing and the whole when, when, it, when it works in EFI but it doesn't work in the OS. That's a nightmare. I want you to understand how to avoid nightmares. That is a big fucking nightmare. That is best if you learn to avoid. And that's that for today. <laughs>